I don't know what Twilight Zone I'm living in anymore. So, this really odd news story broke um, about um, the upcoming film The Predator and its writer-director Shane Black and another actor who was in the film. And I don't... I have no reason to talk about this other than it's so weird I kind of want to talk about it and also because it's like a at least for me it's it's like it's almost like a weird follow-up to what happened with James Gunn but um, you know it's uh, I, I have significantly different feelings about it and then we'll kind of we'll kind of get there so I'm gonna start as bare bones and factual as I can before I get into my own feelings about this so it was revealed that there was a scene that was cut from the predator at the insistence of fox the studio releasing it um after having been contacted by olivia munn who was one of the stars of the film um because it was a scene that she was in so it's not it wasn't being cut for content um it wasn't being cut to secure a certain rating nothing like that it was being cut um i it's not, I'm not going to say that Olivia Munn like asked that this be taken out, but she brought concerns and the studio then removed the scene. So what the scene was, <clears throat> um, well, you know, I'll say what it was in a second. The reason that Olivia Munn had objections, it was a scene basically of her and one other character. And it was a scene that was not particularly plot relevant. It was like a fun flavor kind of scene, which, you know, Shane Black has those and they're usually pretty good. So... It was a scene with her and another actor. And what she did not know at the time she filmed it, um, and what, so far as I can tell, basically nobody except Shane Black knew, um, was that the actor who she shared the scene with, the guy um, who's cre uh, credited on IMDb as Stephen Wilder, although I think um, his legal name is Stephen Wilder Strigel. I don't know if he ever gets credited as that. In any case, he apparently... Um, is a sex offender, a registered sex offender who did time for attempting to coerce a 14-year-old girl um, into sexual activity over the internet. So she raised her concerns about having shared a scene with someone like this without being made aware of what was going on. And Fox, I mean, Fox has not put out an official statement on this, I don't think, but it basically just looks like they looked at the situation, went, yeah, the scene isn't vital. We don't have to reshoot anything. We don't have to cover for it. Just get rid of it. We we don't... This is a bad thing. Just get rid of it. So, <clears throat> here's... Here's where things get weird and weirder. Because on the surface, what this is, is a case of... Because th this is an actor who's been in Shane Black movies for a while. And Shane Black has known him for a long time. Like 14 years or more. So they've been friends for a long time. And Shane Black has put him in movies before. He's had similar scenes, like one scene bit part roles in Iron Man 3 in The Nice Guys. So on the surface, what this appears to be is Shane Black basically doing a favor for his friend, helping him to continue to get work. And, um, and the people that he put him into proximity with were not comfortable with this person. Now, based off those facts, I would normally be pretty conflicted because I do feel that people get at times excessively penalized, especially if it's something they've actually served time for. Um, it's, it, you know, I do think we make it overly difficult a lot of times, both societally and socially, for people to ever basically build their lives again. And I, I don't want to get into an argument about whether or not certain people should be allowed to build their lives again um, or what have you. I, I don't really want to open that can of worms, but like I I can get an argument, um, you know, I, I can be torn on, on that kind of issue because it's like, okay, what this guy did in his history, uh, but you know, this, for whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know this guy. I don't know Shane Black. Shane Black said, well, this guy's my friend. I want to try and help him continue to do what he loves and I enjoy working with him. 
And there's a part of me that based off that scenario, that synopsis I just gave you would go, okay, it's a little iffy that he didn't let people know what they were getting into working with this guy, but I get that he wants to help his friend and you know that he was concerned his friend was never gonna work again. Where it loses me and where I end up coming distinctly against Shane Black and this entire situation, which is the inverse of what happened with me and James Gunn. And again, I'll sort of come back and make that comparison. So here's why. Because once you add the additional context back in, this whole thing is at best massive misjudgment and just poor decision making on Shane Black's part. So, firstly, who this guy was sharing a scene with. Olivia Munn is not just any actress, she's an actress who's been at the forefront of the Me Too movement. She was one of, I think it was four or more women who accused Brett Ratner of some of the really skeevy stuff that he was that he was called out for. So she has, so we're dealing in, in a time when this kind of history, in specifically in this industry, is trying is trying to be cleansed because historically, people in this industry, well, not people, men in this industry, I'm not saying that to be anti-male, like the people who were protected in the Hollywood system who were monsters, they were men. I'm sorry, that's what the case was. So they, we're doing horrible things and the system protected them. We are, it's in the process of trying to clear that out. So this is a real bad time and a real bad environment to be kind of basically sneaking a sex offender onto set with someone who is very much actively involved in trying to clean up the mess that guys like this we're allowed to get away with for so long. And, because we're not done, the scene itself. Now, I haven't seen it because it was cut. It probably won't be on you know the Blu-ray or anything like that, but the, we do have a description of the scene. What the scene was, was this guy played a jogger who kept hitting on Olivia Munn and she like blew him off. So, Shane Black, cast, and again, I understand he's probably his friend. No, he is his friend. He's basically said as much. He cast his friend, who has a history as a sex offender, to share a scene opposite a woman who took a massive risk to her own career to call out a, a harasser of women, and in that scene had this guy hit on her when she didn't want to be hit on. Wow. Just wow. The the tone deafness of I mean I, I mean honestly including the scene at all is a little bit like I mean I Shane Black can write very funny stuff, so maybe the dialogue saved it on a on a objective level. But you know, it, it's a potentially tone deaf scene as is. You had those circumstances like what? And now to compare this a little bit with James Gunn, who basically lost an ongoing gig because of stuff he did a long time ago that the employers should have been aware of. And, you know, it, that was a whole mess. And I basically sided with James Gunn on that. That I, I think, and I do still think, that his being fired by Disney was messed up. Now, Shane Black isn't being fired. The movie's already done. The movie comes out later this week for when I'm planning to get this video up. I'm recording this several days before it goes up, so it's possible that new things have happened. I, 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 can't, I can't wait longer and do this. I, I have to shoot it now. I've got Pride this weekend. Um, in Vermont Pride's in September because we're weird. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm shooting it now, but it's uploading later. So hopefully no major new wrinkles have happened. But at the time of recording, he hasn't been... You know, like I said, they can't fire him. Movie's done. Um, but I think that this has a this is potentially way more damaging in the long term to Shane Black than what happened with James Gunn. Because what happened with James Gunn only cost him his current gig. 
like basically as soon as pretty much the world agreed that Disney was in the wrong studios and and networks and whatever were lining up trying to book Gunn to to work with him so Gunn was not hurting for extra work black I think that unless the Predator performs really well, and I mean, it's tracking to perform decently, but unless it really blows away expectations, I think he's gonna, he's gonna be banished back to the indie level, you know, back to when he did stuff like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang again. I think he's gonna lose serious studio support and he's not gonna be able to do things like The Predator and Iron Man 3 again for a long time and not because of some sort of you you protected a you know a sex offender and and social justice demands that we must punish you no it's not that what he did legitimately put the film project and the studio at risk because he brought on somebody knowing this person's history knowing that that history could be bad pr for the movie for the studio and did not make anybody aware that he was bringing this guy on so just from a studio you know management perspective he now becomes a liability especially because now we we look back and go he's had this guy on multiple movies now so he's been doing this repeatedly and not telling people this guy's history so from the perspective of studios they're like this guy's a liability with James Gunn, it was all just about image, and the image of, of things he had tweeted out clashed with the image that Disney liked to have, so Disney did something really stupid over six-year-old tweet. I still can't believe how dumb that was. But anyways, this is something that was ongoing and current and potentially damaging, not just to an image or a brand, but the project itself. And pulling that kind of move, that is the kind of thing that gets a director, I think rightfully, sent into direct, director jail. And again, I don't want to, I don't want to get overly, like, aggressively judgmental on this. Because again, I, I suspect to a certain degree that Shane Black's, what he was doing was blinded by the fact that from his perspective, I'm helping my friend. And he probably didn't take a step back to fully appreciate what it was he was actually doing. That doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it excusable. And it doesn't mean that studios should go, oh, well, that's fine. Give him another $100 million movie to do. Well, no. <laughs> that, that would be really stupid for them to do. And this, you know, as someone who is a fan of his work, it's unpleasant. It's not as unpleasant as finding out that he himself is is some kind of sex offender. Um, that obviously would have been way worse, but this isn't good. It's a bad look. And it's not helped by the statements that he put out defending his actions. And I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on this because I started to look into it, but then I started to dig up the specifics about this guy's conviction. And I'm sorry, guys, I just don't wanna. I just don't want to read. I just, I, I don't, I don't have the stomach to do the research on this. Not this time. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this, but what I will say is the statement that Black put out, he included not only, you know, a general support of this guy, which, you know, what was he going to, he obviously did know. So, I mean, what else was he going to say? But then he implied that this guy was somehow railroaded or tricked into soliciting a 14 year old over the internet for an extended period of time mm. like guys I, I i read a very little bit about this guy's conviction and about the the i don't know if it was text or messenger or what but messages he was sending to this 14 year old and no just a whole lot of no. So I think Shane Black has further made things worse for him. And that's, that's going to convict him in the court of public opinion. And then, you know, the fact that he did this and, like I said, potentially damaging to the film, studios are going to look at him with a very cautious eye. And I think if he 
gets hired at all, it's going to be at a much lower budget than he's been allowed to play with up to this point because he's going to be seen as a risk. Now, he's a talented risk, but when you have a talented risk, you hire them, but you give them much smaller projects. You know, that's, that's why M. Night Shyamalan wasn't allowed to keep making things the size and scope of The Last Airbender and After Earth, but he could still get financing for stuff like The Visit and Split. So, I, although, I mean, not to compare the, the, <laughs> the reasons why M. Night Shyamalan was a risk with why Shane, but I, I, like, I, I don't mean to compare them, but just in terms of determining that this director is a risk, but they can do good work. That's, that's the only reason I made that comparison. And I think I'll wrap it up there. I, I do at this point, at time of recording, we'll see how I feel after I sleep on this for a little bit, but at time of recording, I do still plan to see The Predator. Um, I wanted to see it. I really liked the last trailer. Um, and like I said, I like Shane Black's movies. And I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm not somebody who calls for a boycott. I'm not going to try and dissuade anyone from seeing it. But, um, you know, I think I do have to kind of sleep on it a couple days and sort of get a sense of myself um, in terms of my own comfort level of do I actually want to spend money on this movie now? And, and, like I said, at this point, I, I do intend to. I think I will, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to promise that. I, I, I need to sleep on it. So, I don't know, man. I think the only reason I felt the need to talk about this was, cause, was because of the James Gunn thing. And again, it's, it's almost like the inverse, at least as far as my feelings go on it. But just like, when director things this bizarre happen, it's like, yeah, can we talk that out for a minute? Because... Wow, dude. Just wow. So, Shane Black and this removed scene from The Predator. What are your thoughts about it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Please be respectful, not only to me, but to the other people involved. Because I will remove comments if you throw basically hateful or violent speech at any of the people involved, including Shane Black. So don't use that language because I'll remove your comments. So keep it respectful. But whatever your thoughts are, in whatever direction, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's a whole bunch of stuff to do. There's buttons for likes and subscribes and a link to my Patreon and all sorts of other links down there too. If you feel like checking them out, go for it. And remember, you are the council. I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.